Hi everyone, welcome to day 18 of Vlogmas and today I talked this one into sitting down with me to tell you guys all about our love story and how we met. And this one's name is Anthony. <laughs> There's an intro with your name on it. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so over the last few months, we've had some viewers ask questions about how we met, our relationship, and things like that, and just kind of throughout the last 11 years, which is insane, that's so crazy to say out loud, um, just questions that have come up from people, and I have a list of them over here on my computer, so if you see me looking off, that's what I'm doing, is looking at the next question, but we're just going to kind of do an informal chat and answer it. I've got my sweats, my blanket, my chai tea. He's got his wine in a plastic <laughs> Target cup because that's how we roll, right? Um, and we're just gonna jump right in. So I guess it makes the most sense to just, like, how did we meet? I'll tell like the how did I reach out because I'm the one that reached out to him and then he can tell like about our first actual time meeting. Deal? Deal. Okay. So I think I know for sure that I've mentioned this on our channel before, but we met virtually on MySpace back in 2009. So I had been in a long-term high school, college relationship, never dated before, really kind of had no idea how to even do that. But six months after that ended, I was just like ready to kind of meet new people didn't really think I was looking for something serious, just was trying to figure out what the heck I was doing. And so I went on to MySpace, and if you had MySpace, you know that you could search very detailed. Like you could search um, age, gender, location, drinker or non-drinker, smoker or non-smoker. Like it was insane. You could go very detailed with what your search was. Essentially so, it was pre-Tinder. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> um, and so that's what I did. And his profile was the first one that popped up. I, it was like a Seahawks background or banner, something on his page was, was Seahawks. It was Jägermeister, by the way. Well, there was Seahawks on there, too, for sure. I remember that. Or it was Seahawks colors, something like that. Um, and I'm a huge fan of the Seahawks as well, so that caught my attention. I saw pictures of him playing softball. I also played softball. I was like, what the heck? This is weird. I saw pictures of him with family and up on top of a mountain with his black dog and was just like this is weird like it looks like I'm looking at a male version of me and so I didn't really have intentions of reaching out to anybody but when I saw his profile and it just something about it I just had to send a message and I was so scared <laughs> like I was shaking I was living with my bonus mom Tina at the time and I had her read the message before I sent it and I was like should I send it and she was like why not go for it um so then that's when his story comes in. <laughs> yeah, so I was actually at work when um, when she sent, or when I got the message. And uh, I was like, at first, I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was fake. Uh, <laughs> I was like, who's this person actually that's reaching out to me, you know, it's kind of weird, whatever. Two weeks go by, and then I finally sent her a message, and all it said was, Send me, send me a friend request and we'll see how this goes. <laughs> so, she does that. Just kind of creep on her page for a minute and check it out. See if I'm actually even interested in having a conversation or whatever. And another week goes by, still no message. Another week goes by after that. Finally sent her a message. So, like, four weeks later, I'm like, all right. You know what? What the hell? I don't have. What do I have to lose? I mean, you know, she reached out to me. Might as well just, you know, see what's going on. And then from there, we just met up, set a date for December first, and two thousand and nine. Two thousand and nine. We met at the Ram restaurant. Yep. And it's like it was weird because it was like we obviously were both nervous and stuff because you. I wasn't. I mean, yeah, right. You were totally nervous. A little bit. Yeah. You came in a tie. <laughs> he was wearing a tie. So I worked to work. <laughs> um, but 
it was like we had known each other already like the conversation just flowed so well two hours passed by and it didn't seem like seemed like 30 minutes to both of us um it just it just was everything about it was right and so that's how it all started that's how we met thank goodness for myspace and social media or i never i never <laughs> we never would have had a reason to cross paths maybe like on the softball field or something but it wouldn't have been anything doubt it that resulted in anything because you probably wouldn't play co-ed if no, it wasn't for I was me all, so i was all men's league yeah so who knows what were your first impressions of me when you saw me on that dinner date damn <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. So, but no, I mean, just seeing you on on top of the stairs walking up there, uh, I was like, dang. I was like, all right. I was like, well received. <laughs> I was like, she's she's hot. Let's see if her personality matches. So, and and that exceeded my expectations as well. My first impressions of him, um, I mean, I. I feel like first impressions are mostly based on looks because a first impression you see somebody but just he had the biggest smile which obviously like you guys have seen it many times in the videos he was wearing a tie he was all dressed up and I knew he had come from work but I had no idea like if they wore like fancy stuff like that at work but um, just the big smile that he had just he was very like comforting from the beginning and he was just a, a person to that the type of person that you feel like you just want to go up and give them a hug because they're so like welcoming to you so that was my first impression of him so, so the next question is what was the beginning of your relationship like and by beginning i'm just gonna say like the first year of our relationship we met like i said on december 1st we became official boyfriend and girlfriend on the 18th of december which is when this video is going live so it's actually our 11 year anniversary. It's the night before that we're filming this. So basically 11 year anniversary right now. And we, it just moved quickly from the beginning. We just kind of both knew yeah, from pretty much the beginning that this was right, that it was gonna be something for the long term, if not forever. And we just were both all in and it, it was really cool. To, it, was, it wasn't even a conscious decision, it was very, natural and kind of just happened so he was living in an apartment with a roommate at the time i was living with my bonus mom tina at the time and i was like i, I was over there all the time um if i wasn't over there then he was over at our house i got him very sick <laughs> those first few weeks of december i got sick like a couple days after we had our first date we had <laughs> planned another date and i was like i don't think this is a good idea i'm gonna get you sick and he came anyways <laughs> And then he missed a week of work because of it because he got really sick too <laughs> and he still kept me around so that was like that was nice another indication that it was meant to be but yeah the first year of our relationship what would you say the first year was like all right sorry about that the battery died we had to get a new one um but we were talking about the first year of our relationship so the first year of our relationship was i would say was mostly good but it was definitely um weird I don't know if that's the right word for <laughs> it um so I don't want to make this super super long but long story short is that the person that I had been with eight years I the only people I knew up in this area were the family and so I spent a lot of time with them even after splitting up um going to karaoke and going to their house parties and they very much were my family as well obviously when you're with someone that long they they become your family too so it was very interesting because separating that was i don't know it was it was almost impossible because it was like my family but then at the same time it's a past relationship and i have this new person and so he was such a good sport like i don't know <laughs> he's a freaking saint for sure because I don't think anybody else would have stuck around, <laughs> probably. Probably not. Um, it wasn't even like, I don't know. It was just, he would come to karaoke with us. I, I mean, he's at karaoke with my ex-boyfriend's parents, you know? So just, <laughs> it just put it into kind of that realm. He must have really liked me because, 
because that's the only reason why uh, he stuck around. But we figured it out. We got through it together. We still are friends with them to this day. My ex's kids and our kids are very, are good friends. We have play dates together. He likes him. We're all cool now. It's it's a very like good place, and I'm glad that we were all able to get to that place and like put our kind of selfishness aside. And obviously, with time, it helps everything too. Um, the fact that we are all very happy with each, like in each other, like our relationship, their relationship, it helps a lot. So um, we're in a very good place now, but you can imagine that that first year was kind of like just really weird, I guess you could say. But I, I would say it's mostly good. I'd was, say uh, weird. I'd say more so interesting. Interesting, yeah. Than weird. It was, it was different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was very different. Yeah. It was it was weird talking just kind of talking to my family about it. They just get all weirded out like be like what? Like why would you even bother hanging out with with them and things like yeah. that? Which they didn't get it, but But then one of his brothers thing. did come hang out with us at one point. He came to do karaoke with us and he was like, "Okay, I get it now." Like Oh, Paul. Paul, yeah. yeah. He was like, "I get it now." And it's hard unless you're part of it. It's almost impossible to explain, but we love them all dearly still. Um still a part of their lives and vice versa they invite us for easter and stuff obviously before covid but yeah so it's definitely probably very different than a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> right, but yeah. it works for us so that's all that matters right yeah it don't phase me at all yeah so let's talk about our engagement you talk about our engagement story then you planned it all <laughs> yeah this is a good one um so miss captain obvious over here um we had for a while we had been talking about you know getting married and and spending our lives together and things like that and uh her subtle not so subtle way was to have her background on her computer as the engagement ring that she wanted <laughs> i don't remember that yeah <laughs> so i'm like okay let's snap a picture of that <laughs> the background um so I just happened to find the exact ring and uh, ended up getting it and and uh, I had it for about a month or so after I had already purchased it. And I knew he had it. Did. Yeah, we picked it up at the mall together. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. But and I made he, you stay outside. Yeah, <laughs> the, and yeah. the store. Right, yeah, he wouldn't let me go in the <laughs> store, but I knew he had it, but I had no idea. Yeah, when or where. When or where, yeah. So, we ended up getting engaged on December 16th, 2012. So, almost so, three years together. Yeah, basically. almost three years, just a couple days prior. So, it us being up here you know in the northwest the pacific northwest it was cold <laughs> it was rainy and i'm sitting here one of the things that she specifically told me when i do this that she wants friends and family to be around specifically because she didn't want to say the story a million times she wanted the people that mattered the most to us to be there um no one wanted to be there because it was pouring down rain and I didn't want to tell a single soul why I wanted them to be there because I didn't trust people to keep a secret this important so I was just like trying to be secretive to them and then everybody's like yeah you know we're not gonna be able to make it so I'm like look I'm gonna propose a gen you have to be there next thing you know we got a group of fifth probably about yeah about 10 15 people yeah. in the pouring rain to you go, didn't even say where. To go look at uh, at lights. We were at at zoo lights at one of the the zoos over here, and <laughs> and we were walking outside in the pouring, pouring rain, and the entire time I'm looking for the perfect place to do it, and that place just happened to be at the entrance, which was the end of the night. We right. had already gone through the whole yeah. thing, and I did not. I am someone that figures things out so easily like any tiny little clues and I like catch on to it I latch on to it and I find I go to the I get to the bottom of it and yeah. I figure it out and I had no idea at all <laughs> and I like looking back I should have realized it because one of our friends that was with us Christine hi if you're watching this hates the cold and rain and she was still there 
and I didn't even really think that t that, that was weird. <laughs> but in retrospect, it was very weird yeah. that she was still willing to be there in the cold rain. <laughs> it was Yeah, and I avoided her all night. <laughs> like, I hung out with everybody else but her. She was in the front of the pack, I was in the back. And when she would come to the back to see what I was doing, I would go to the front and just leave her hanging. <laughs> Because I was just so nervous. I didn't, you know. I would have picked up on it probably at that yeah. point. Yeah. But so at the entrance, there is this, like, I don't know, maybe two foot tall, like, ledge that you can stand, sit on or stand up on to kind of overlook all of the lights. And um, someone has, was like, hey, let's get a picture of you guys up there. Well, so what, what had happened is I told Steph, um, I told your sister, hey, I'm going to go tell Jen to take a picture with me and we're going to stand up here but I want you to just take a video just pretend like you're trying to take a picture of us I I helped her up onto the step you know I held her hand onto the step and I got up there with her too and no you stayed down no 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 I got down and I told you to stay up there oh that's right you got up there to like take yeah. the picture yeah take the and picture as soon as uh, I saw the light come on and I got down off the step and told you to stay up there and and as soon as I got down and, and I told you that, you immediately started to cry because you knew it was happening and everybody was there with their phones out. And yeah. <laughs> that was the that first. That was the moment where it hit yeah. me. And I was 100% surprised. Like, yeah. I didn't think he was going to ask that soon after having the ring. I thought it was going to be like sometime in the next year or something. Like, I had no idea whatsoever. Um, and then I almost poked your eye out with an umbrella. <sighs> I'm really clumsy when it comes to umbrellas. You're really clumsy like, when yeah. it comes to anything Everything. outside of your own hands. Mm, I'm even clumsy with my own hands. Yeah, I haven't, you haven't poked my eye out with your hands yet. True, that's true. That's just every other but thing. Yeah, so hold. we have a video of it. It's very dark and it's kind of hard to understand, but I'll put the video of it right here just so you can at least kind of get a feel for how it went. I don't know what you're doing. So I'll talk to you. So, babe. This night took a lot of training. <laughs> I love you. This is the best three years of my life. Um, you know, I don't want you to be my girlfriend anymore. <laughs> I want you to be my wife. <laughs> Are you nervous? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no, yeah. Don't jump! Don't jump! <laughs> oh my god, you're serious? Yeah. Oh, that's a green face. <laughs> I didn't get this out of the quarter machine, I promise. <laughs> that was the last one. Yeah. <laughs> that was so Okay, the next question is from a subscriber, Amanda. And she wanted to know how many kids did we want from the start and he wanted two I wanted four so we agreed on three three almost didn't happen we almost were at two and, and yeah. done because yeah. of this one but there's another video about that you can go watch that one <laughs> so we ended up with three good compromise and yeah it works out. yeah I mean I come from a big family so I didn't want a lot of kids yeah and I I'm the opposite it, I mean Technically, I have more siblings, but I grew up with just my sister and I, so I wanted more than just two because I always wished I had somebody else to hang out with other than my sister. And boss around. And boss around, yeah. That was nice, too. I did have my cousin, which was she was very much like a sister to us, so that was, that was good for sure. And I think the three dynamic was really good. So the next question is going to be, what has been the most challenging during your relationship? And what did you learn about each other or how was your relationship strengthened by that time? I just, I think honestly, I think our most challenging aspect of our relationship was the lack of discipline with our finances. I think for me, that was probably the most hard, hard thing for me. Really? I'm surprised. I yeah. I going to say that. Other than baby number two not sleeping. <laughs> I thought you were going to say my depression. Yeah, I mean, 
that was, I mean, don't get me wrong, that was definitely tough as well. But I can deal with your personalities. <laughs> Personalities. Oh gosh. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We. Gosh. When was it that we finally got serious about it? For yeah. For like the first two thirds of our relationship, approximately, we didn't budget our money. I would like budget it, but it would be like after the month was over, I would go back and like write down how much we spent. <laughs> like that's kind of was the extent of it. It was so silly like I'm a numbers person so I felt like that gave me a control of things by having like numbers written down <laughs> <laughs> which is silly to look back on now yeah. but we just hadn't we neither of us really learned growing up like how to deal with money um how to stay away from debt or why you should stay away from debt how to budget how to be smart with your money how to save it all of the all of those things so it just caused it caused a lot of stress mostly on his part but then it also caused a lot of stress on my part because I knew that was like the only thing that he would stress out about is money. And so I would try to kind of shoulder all of the weight of that and I just wouldn't bring it up to him. Like if I was noticing that a bill was going to be coming up and our checking account was too low to cover it, I would just try to figure something out instead of like talking with him about it and figuring it out together. So that way he wouldn't have to stress about it if he didn't know. So, yeah, yeah, I can see how that would yeah, be the hardest that for was, you. That was hard. I don't stress about much, honestly, like, yeah, barely anything. Um, but finances were a big stressor for me. But how do you think it made us stronger? Like, well, it made us communicate more. Yeah. Um, we had to be more open about it. Yeah. And I had to accept letting control go so that we could share the load instead of shouldering it all on my own, which yeah. was great for both of us. Yeah, very much so. So we obviously, if, you know, if you've seen anything of ours, we follow Dave Ramsey now in the last three, four years have been much, much less stressful. <laughs> <laughs> to say the very least, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's been amazing. It's been life-changing. Um, how have you dealt with conflict in your relationship? We're... We don't have conflict that often. Yeah, it's very weird in a good way. Um, yeah, a lot of our things about our relationship are interesting. Yeah, weird. well, see, here's the thing: is like, like I mentioned earlier, not things don't really get to me. Things don't really like make me mad. Mm -hmm. I'm very much a go with the flow type of person. Um, she is very opposite. <laughs> opposite. Um, I would say structured as a kind word instead of controlling because we don't like to say that uh, i mean <laughs> i'm just kidding the shoe fits right <laughs> yeah no but really um she likes to have control of a lot of things and i'm okay with that because i don't um outside of my professional life i mean yeah outside of work i am just it's like whatever yeah happens happen like yeah you know Anything, I'm, I'm, I, I can be happy in any situation, I can type a thing, and for her, her eyes have to be dotted and T's have to be crossed and then she's happy. Yeah. And so, I'm okay with letting <clears throat> all that stuff go under her control because I'm just like, alright, if it makes you happy, then I'm happy with it, so I just But then there's, just there are a it. few things that he is like has a little bit of a stronger opinion about and when that does happen then he speaks up about it right um and so when those things happen or we have a disagreement over how to handle a situation which like i said is like twice a year maybe <laughs> it's very very rare um we don't fight we we just have a conversation about it like there's been times where um we kind of nitpicked at each other a little bit kind of tempers flared a little bit and so we just kind of go our separate ways for like 10 minutes or so cool down take a deep breath kind of get our headspace back to like a non blood boiling place and then we come back together and just talk about it 
um, how it made me feel, how it made him feel. And I think that's the, the reason why we don't argue much is because we know that I, I know that he's going to listen to how I feel and take that seriously and vice versa. So I don't know. I feel like that's why it works so well. Yeah. I mean, it's just nice that we just don't argue. It is nice. <clears throat> and it's like when he does speak up about something, I try to let go even more of my like control of whatever situation that is because he doesn't speak up very often. So when he does, I know it's important to him. And so I try to be mindful of that as well because you don't say anything unless it's important. That's right. Yeah. Like right now so I just said that's right. So that was important. <laughs> so basically <laughs> if you're someone who likes to kind of have a handle on things and run the show, then find someone like him who <laughs> wants someone to run the show for them. Right. And it works. <laughs> Very much so. All right. I think this is getting kind of long. So we're going to do two more questions. And if you have more questions for us, then leave them in the comments because we could do a part two to this at some point in the future as well. So the next question is, how do you handle housework and other chores? There's not really like a specified, like your job is this, your job is this, and your job is this. When it comes to us, we both like pitch in where needed. Um, I can't stand doing the dishes and he doesn't mind it. He can't stand how I load the dishwasher. <laughs> not one bit. <laughs> She's not a very good Tetris player. <laughs> he's, he's so picky about loading the dishwasher. So um, that kind of becomes his arena, but it's not like I don't do the dishes. Like if there's dishes there and I have a free minute, I'm going to do them because we just kind of work as a team in that way. Same with laundry. I don't think either of us really enjoy laundry. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and just put this out there. I don't mind doing the laundry. Oh, I don't, no, I know where this is going. I don't mind <laughs> folding the clothes. Oh, no. <laughs> she minds me folding the clothes. He folds them all wrong. And I fold them <laughs> you to can be folded. <laughs> you can hang them up, the ones that hang. Nah, I probably still don't do those right. <laughs> I don't put them in um, color order. <laughs> okay. I, I, I need to work on that because... <laughs> I, <laughs> Understatement of 2020, I need to work on that. <laughs> I like to have certain things certain ways. As and in certain things, that's all of our wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fold everything Marie style so that it sits nicely in our drawers. You can see everything we have, especially the girls, because the girls' drawer system is very small. It's um, The drawers are skinny, so you have to fold them a certain way. Otherwise, everything's just going to get shoved in there. Uh, and... What about our clothes? Those aren't small. No, but it doesn't look very good. Like, when I pull the drawer out and everything is perfectly folded and in a line, it just makes my heart happy. And he folds... I mean, he tries. He's definitely <laughs> tried before. No, 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 but no, no. I no. Just... Is, prior to her whole Conry, whatever her name is, thing... It would be fine. I would fold them and I would put them away. But thanks to Netflix, that's not a thing anymore because she doesn't let me do but it. But you have to admit that it's much more efficient and it looks really good. Okay. But it still doesn't change the fact that I could still be doing it. Yeah. So, so that becomes more of my, like the folding clothes becomes more my chore, which is why our whole bed is mounted with clothes and folded right now. But I have no problem putting them in the in the dishwasher in the washing machine. But yeah. So, anyways, we kind of got off on a tangent there, but we just do whatever needs to be done. And <laughs> he tends to do dishes, taking out the garbages, and like getting clothes in the washer and dryer, washing the diaper, laundry, and stuff. I tend to do like everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I do three things. I mean, and then he, we, whatever, like if things need picked up or whatever, obviously like, but yeah, we just work together as a team and that's what works for us, I think. Okay. The last question, what is your number one piece of advice for a successful relationship? Probably being able to say you're sorry. Um, I think that's, that's huge. Um, shows recognitions of her feelings and shows that you're actually paying attention to 
what you may have done wrong. Man, there's so much I could go on and on about advice, but ultimately just communication. Communication, in general, like. just loving her unconditionally or him. Um, just unconditionally, just don't let the little things bug you because there's always going to be a little thing and you can't just let that destroy you and eat at you because when the big thing comes around that could be a game changer all right well the memory card just filled up so i had to we had to redo that but man this is going to be really long so we should wrap this up but um communication really hearing what people what they have to say and if you feel yourself getting angry step aside like step away and if the person that you're with is someone who does get angry and needs to step away then don't be upset about that like let them step away and cool down then come back together and have discussions when you're cool-headed because when you're discussing things when you're angry it's just not gonna work for anybody just hurt people hurt people yeah and you don't want that um, but then honestly another huge thing is get in control of your money it sounds kind of like like what do you mean that has nothing to do with the relationship that has so much to do with the Everything. relationship yeah. it's one of the leading causes of divorce and being in control of your money budgeting where every penny goes before the start of the month knowing kind of what your plan is making sacrificial decisions early on so that you can get to a place where you can breathe a little bit and you don't have to do those things that has changed like we had a good relationship before but it's even better since doing that so that would be my advice so that is it for today's video thank you so much for watching and i hope you got to know us a little bit more if you're watching this on the day we posted which is december 18th we are doing our date anniversary date covid style and we are vlogging so make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow's video so that you can see how it went it's gonna be fun for sure i can't wait i'm excited but oh, yeah. <laughs> if you saw the letters pop up in the video and you weren't sure what that was for make sure you read the description box because we're doing a giveaway for vlogmas but for now, remember to stay humble, be kind, and... We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Stop. Hammer time. <laughs> Baby, this year is just gonna be you and me. Hang by the fire and chill. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories, oh, and I've been... Forget about